one state line to the south. A murderer and master manipulator ducks out of death row. Harris County Jail, Houston, Texas, 2005. A high security prison smack in the middle of a big city can't afford to play nice with its prisoners. They're living in these small six by 10 cells, 23 hours a day. It's just concrete and steel. That's all you experience. The prisoners are caged on the top floors, high above ground level. One of them is determined to break out and roam the streets below. 35-year-old Charles Victor Thompson murdered his former girlfriend and another man in cold blood. He had just had a, a retrial on the punishment phase, and uh, he had been given the death penalty. Thompson's real home, the Polunsky unit in nearby Polk County. A hardcore lockup where he'll have a date with a death chamber. Probably was thinking in his mind, you know, if I'm going to try to escape or do something like this, this is the place to do it. But how? That was the big question. How could Charles Victor Thompson escape from death row custody? It'll be as easy as walking out the front door. Harris County Jail, Houston, Texas, November 2005. Convicted double murderer Charles Victor Thompson is scheduled to be returned to another prison for a date with the executioner. A sentence he's got no intention of idly waiting for. To find a way out, he uses his legal consultations to scope out the jail's security. He notes where the guards are, what they're doing, and when. Over time, he became very aware of these obvious flaws in the procedures. He felt, you know, this is possible. After weeks of studying, Thompson is a killer with a killer plan. He's going to walk out of Harris County Jail, plain and simple. He plans his escape to take place after one of his legal consultations. After the lawyer leaves and before the guard returns, Thompson will sneak out into the corridors full of people and walk all the way to the ground floor. He'll flash a fake ID to slip by the guard, go outside, hop a freight train, and ride the rails to freedom. This all came down to Harris County procedure. This particular guard is here at this time. This particular guard is here at that time. For Thompson's plan to work, he needs to prepare a few tools. And it's all got to happen before he's transferred. Because he had been in this trial on the punishment phase again, he actually had some street clothes. So he had them in his cell. Thompson intends to smuggle his street clothes into his meeting. But that's not enough. He needs convincing identification to get past security. He used a badge, a fake badge, that he may have gotten from, from a custodian, I believe. He doctors it to say he works for the attorney general's office. He decided on choosing some agency that was much higher than the people he was dealing with. He had to choose some area that was more intimidating. Thompson packs his clothes, along with legal papers and a handcuff key. Charles had a handcuff key. Somebody had had to have supplied him with one. Last piece of the plan, Thompson has scheduled himself an appointment with a new unsuspecting lawyer. Charles Thompson was meeting somebody who was not his regular attorney. There's a special booth in the jail where you have these visits. The prisoner is locked in this booth. And also, by the way, he's handcuffed. When his meeting ends, his escape begins. Thompson knows the guard will be back soon. He gets out of his handcuffs and into his street clothes. I don't think he would have changed his clothing if he felt he was going to be trapped in his cell. A prisoner of the state walked in. A well-heeled civilian walks out. 
I'm really not sure even now how he got out of his handcuffs and got out of that locked booth. Thompson strides through the building. Anyone might stop him, ask him who he is. Thompson makes it to the ground floor without being caught. He's like the kid next door, so if you met him, you would not think that this was a prisoner from death row. Thompson blends right in, but the greatest challenge lies ahead. Nobody like to see that. If his fake ID fails him, it's a short, potentially deadly sprint to the front door. Thompson plays the high-status official to a T. Acts offended that the guard would even dare question him. The bluff works. At certain levels, you never want to mess with people who work higher up. And, you know, Charles used that to his advantage. And he just walked right out the front door. Not just Texas custody, but Texas death row custody. Thompson is out, roaming the streets of downtown Houston. With cops everywhere, the question is, how long can he live on the lam? Houston, Texas, November 3rd, 2005. Convicted double murderer Charles Victor Thompson walks out of death row custody. But he still needs a way to get out of Houston fast. He made himself look like a jogger. He was heading for the railroad tracks to catch a train. The Harris County Jail is just a few miles from a major rail yard. An escapee's dream. For now, no one knows where Charles Thompson is going or what he's willing to do to survive. He probably had about an hour and a half to two hours head start before we were notified by the Harris County. By the time word gets out, Thompson is in a boxcar heading north. Usually we think if anybody's gonna escape, they're gonna either go north or south. And he went north. He felt, if I get to Canada, they'll never see me again. We knew that he had two murders on his belt. So we had an idea of what type of dangerous individual we were dealing with. That there was no playing around. To protect the public, the marshals need to catch Thompson. But as long as he's riding the rails, he's invisible. Forty-eight hours and 250 miles from his old prison home, Thompson makes it to northwest Louisiana, where he's forced to make a choice. He stopped off in Louisiana because the train stopped, and then it started going back the other way. So he says, oh, this is not good. Only two and a half months since Hurricane Katrina ravaged New Orleans. A horrific tragedy for most. For Thompson, it's another opportunity. Chuck resorted to the, well, you know, I'm a Katrina victim. I'm trying to get up north to my family in Nebraska. They gave him some clothes, some food. I believe they even gave him a few dollars and a ride back to the highway. So that's the kind of individual we're looking at. Sympathy for Katrina victims gets Thompson a ride to Shreveport, Louisiana, and beer money. He bought a six pack of beer and you know made some telephone calls. It's a costly mistake. A stranger, drunk, and making long distance phone calls attracts unwanted attention. And we knew they had eyeball on an individual that matched the description. Tripper U.S. Marshal Service mobilized through task force. Before he even turned around to see what it was, he knew what it was. He was just simply laid down on the ground, and, and when they asked him, who are you, he said, you know who I am. After two days on the run, still 1,300 miles short of the Canadian border, Charles Thompson is sent back to Texas and death row. This is what we do. We are going to hunt you down until we find you. Thompson was led into the courtroom, shackled and handcuffed. He was flanked by... When I asked Chuck how he managed to get out of those handcuffs and get out of that booth, he doesn't really tell you how he did it. He's keeping his secrets. Then he walked through three... Secrets Thompson says he's keeping. 
while he waits for his date with the executioner.